I gotta tell you, there have been times in my life that I've been so angry because I was so hurt. I wasn't sure I would ever get over it. I wasn't sure I would ever get back to normal. I wasn't sure that I would ever be able to see certain people, have certain conversations, think about certain people without intense anger. And when somebody says to me, get rid of it, it means they think you can get rid of it. And some of you are here today and you'd say, you know what? I have tried to forgive and I've tried to get rid of it and I've tried not to lose my temper and I've tried to get a handle on this and I've tried to move past it. I've tried and I've tried and I've just decided the best I can do is manage it, but I'll never get over it. So when a guy writing from a Roman prison who's been hurt by everybody close to him says, get rid of it, assumption being he believes that we can get rid of it, that's somebody to listen to. Whether you're a Christian or not, whether you think the Bible's inspired or not, whether you believe anything else the Apostle Paul says. I mean, let's face it, you, you've watched infomercials and bought that stuff, right? You weren't sure it would do everything they promised it would do. But if it even might do what they promised it would do, you figure for 1995, it's worth the risk, right? And you get the stuff and it's not what it's cracked up to be, but heck, it was 1995, so you know that, my loss. Well, you know what? Forget whether or not you believe this is inspired. Forget for just a minute whether or not you believe the Apostle Paul is speaking for God. Here's a guy that 2,000 years ago from a Roman prison says, I believe you can be free of this and it won't cost you anything to explore and to try. I think that's worth paying attention to. Because some of you today, if you told your story, your story would go like this. My anger, my temper, my malicious spirit, my slandering tongue has cost me over and over and over and over. My mouth burned down a marriage. My temper alienated me from my kids. I see there is something in me and I wish it would be gone. And Paul says, you know what? You can be free of that. You can be rid of that. And he tells us how. Here's the answer. Look what he says in the next verse. Get rid of all this stuff. Verse 32, be kind, it's hard, and compassionate to one another. And then here's the operative word, forgiving each other. In other words, here's what we, he says if we put it all together. You get rid of all this stuff by forgiving one another. You get rid of anger and bitterness and slander and malice and abusive speech and all the stuff that just comes out of you. The way you get rid of that is not by just zipping your lip and walking out of the room. The way you get rid of it is not by ignoring the people and the problem. The way you get rid of it is not by just refusing to deal with it. The way you get rid of it is that you forgive one another. Do you know what forgiveness is? This may be new information. This may be review, but it's not intuitive. Forgiveness is two things. Number one, forgiveness is a decision that you make. Forgiveness is a decision. In other words, here and in other parts of scripture, we are commanded to forgive. It's not something that happens at a certain place in our emotions. It's not something that happens when we're necessarily ready for it. Forgiveness is a decision we make. Forgiveness is a decision. Secondly, do you know what forgiveness is? Forgiveness is making the decision that someone doesn't owe you any more. That's all it is. It's the decision that somebody doesn't owe you anymore because here's what happens. And this is very important. So I don't, I don't know that I explain it well, but try to hang with me. Every time you've been hurt, there's a sense in which something has been taken away from you. Did you know that? Every time you were hurt, it may be something intangible like, you know, my dad left my mom and he stole from me the opportunity to grow up with both parents in the home. He stole from me a part of my childhood. She stole from me the opportunity to finish with the person I began marriage with. He stole from me an opportunity to make a certain amount of money. He stole from me my reputation. It may be something intangible. It may be something tangible. It may be a physical, literal something. But every time you've ever been hurt, it's because somebody stole or took something from you that you believed was yours, that you believed you deserved. And because they stole it from you, they created a sense in which they owed you something. Forgiveness is the decision to cancel that debt. It is to say, you took this from me, you robbed me of this experience, because of what you've done, I'm in this situation and I'm making a decision 
I'm not going to wait for you to own up to it. I'm not going to wait for you to apologize. I'm not going to wait for you to come to me. I'm making a decision. You don't owe me anymore. I'm canceling the debt. That's what forgiveness is. And Paul says this. If you can get your arms around that, if that can become the habit of your life, something will happen on the inside of you. And that something that happens on the inside of you will manifest itself out of you and how you talk, what you say, your temper, your perspective on life, how you treat the people around you. The little Greek word that he uses, there's two Greek words for forgiveness. The one he chooses in this particular context is a picture of giving a gift. He says, everywhere you go, it's present tense. It's a lifestyle he's talking about. I want you to constantly be giving the gift of forgiveness, constantly giving the gift of forgiveness. Oh, that hurt. Here's some forgiveness. Oh, you took advantage of me. Here's some forgiveness. You messed up my reputation. Here's some forgiveness. You stole my idea. Here's, here's some forgiveness. You messed up my marriage. Here's some forgiveness. You took her from me. Here's some forgiveness. That the habit of your life and the habit of my life is to dispense forgiveness to be make it the habit of our life to, uh, to identify, and we'll talk about this in just a minute, to identify what has been taken and to say out loud in the presence of God oftentimes, if not the presence of others, you, they, he, she doesn't owe me anymore. Debt canceled. But you know, that's not intuitive, is it? And the reason it's not intuitive and the reason it doesn't come easy is because they really do owe you, don't they? This isn't something you've imagined. They, he, she, it, whoever, they took something from you. And so for me to stand up here this morning and say, figure out what it was that was taken and cancel that debt and move on. There's something in you that says, no way, Jose, because they don't deserve it. And if I just forgive them, I'm letting them off the hook. It's like I'm rewarding them for what they've done. I'm the victim. I'm the person that was hurt. Why in the world would I give them something? They already took something from me. And now you're saying, give them the gift of forgiveness? Are you crazy? That doesn't make any sense. I can't do that. And yeah, I recognize my anger's tearing me up. I recognize it's impacting current relationships. I realize I've got some stuff that, you know, drives people crazy. I realize I blow off too quick. I lose my temper. I realize I've got some free flowing anger. I know all that. I mean, people have told me, but to just forgive, I, why? Why should I do that? And you know what the answer is? There is no good reason, really. That's why we don't do it. I mean, we say, I forgave, and oftentimes that means I don't want to see him ever again. You know, that's what, I, I forgave her, I never want to see her again. Do what? Yeah, I forgave her, I don't want to ever see her again. Huh? I forgave him, don't mention his name in my presence, he's forgiven. <laughs> here, here, here's, here's the catch, and this leads us to the second half of this verse. Listen, look up here, listen. Forgiveness, the reason we don't forgive, the reason it's so hard, forgiveness really doesn't make any sense unless you are a forgiven person. Forgiveness doesn't make any sense. There's no reason to forgive unless you are a forgiven person. And if you're here today and you are a Christian, that is you put your faith in Christ and yet you still have a difficult time forgiving, here's why. It's because in some way, shape or form, like we talked about last week, you have lost sight of the significance of the invitation God has granted to you for relationship. You have lost sight or maybe you never completely understood the significance of the fact that you have been completely forgiven of your sin. Because forgiveness doesn't make any sense unless you are a forgiven person. And maybe you were raised in church and maybe Jesus is a, you know, a picture on a wall. You know, it's a crucifix hanging over the mantle. It's sort of you know, a picturesque kind of ethereal thing out there somewhere, but it's never become personal for you. I know, what, I know something about you then. Where you've been most deeply hurt, you find it almost impossible to forgive. And here's why. Because you are so laser focused on the person that hurt you. You know they don't deserve to be forgiven. You know to forgive them is to let them off the hook and you dare not do that. The degree to which you understand the significance of your forgiveness is the degree to which you will be freed up to forgive the people that have hurt you. 
But if this is not a part of your life, there's no real reason or motivation to forgive. Look how the apostle Paul finishes this verse. This is what he says. He says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. And look at these huge two words. These are so big. Just as, or in the same way, to the same degree, to the same depth, as in Christ, God forgave you. We don't, this is, this, is, this is huge. This is where we get all hooked up emotionally, right? We don't forgive because they deserve to be forgiven. We forgive because we have been forgiven. In a sense, we let them off the hook because your heavenly father let you off the hook. We say, you don't owe me anymore. Because at some point in your past, you recognize the fact that on Calvary, on a cross, your heavenly father looked at you in your sin and said, you don't owe me anymore. We say debt canceled. Because our heavenly father looked at all of our sin and our inconsistency. And he said, debt canceled. That's why you forgive. That's why Paul could say, you got to just get rid of that stuff and forgive. But Paul, but Paul, you haven't heard my story. Paul would say, you haven't taken a good, long, hard look at your savior. But Paul, you don't understand what they've done. Paul would say, you know what? You've forgotten what you've done. You don't know how bad they hurt me. You, you don't know how deeply your sin offended him. I'm telling you, when this becomes the focus Forgiveness here becomes easier. When you begin to understand the depth and the significance of what Christ did for you at the cross, you realize, listen, this is so important. At the cross, all of us lost our excuse not to forgive. Because at the cross, we're reminded that we had a debt we could not pay. And our heavenly father said, debt canceled. And whereas it cost us oftentimes nothing more than a little bit of pride to forgive, it cost our heavenly father, his son. And so the apostle Paul with a straight face without ever having heard your story, inspired by God, I believe, says to you and he says to me what Jesus said, you forgive. One day Peter said, Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive? I mean, the guy keeps doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over. How many times do I have to forgive? And Jesus said, 70 times seven, which was his way of saying, you just keep on forgiving. In other words, hey, Peter, let me ask you a question. How many times does your heavenly father keep forgiving you for the same stupid stuff? A lot. Hey, Peter, how many times have you said, God, I'll never do this again, and you did it again? A lot. Well, then you do unto others as I have done unto you. Let me give you three things to make this as practical as I know how, because I know this is such a huge issue. We're gonna put these up on the screen for you. The first one is the easy one, is simply to identify the people you're angry with. That's easy, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know how I identify the people I'm angry with? And this is something I try to monitor in my heart because I have seen what anger and unresolved bitterness can do to a family, to a relationship, to, to relationships that aren't even resolved, aren't even related to where, you know, where the hurt first took place. Do you know how I, I monitor who I'm angry at with me is the, is the imaginary conversations I find myself having with people? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. But when I'm angry at people, I find myself driving or laying in bed at night or you know, working and having these imaginary conversations with them and I'm just tearing them down and there's usually a crowd watching, you know? <laughs> you ever do that? And in your mind, you're always right and they go, oh, you're right and they never push back. And when they try to push back, you push back and you always win the argument. I mean, how many imaginary conversations have you had with your ex-husband or wife or your kids or your parents or your boss or your employer or those unreasonable people in your life? You know what, when you find yourself kind of gloating and you know, Boy, that's somebody. That's somebody that's got a hook in you and you don't even like them. They got a hook in you and they're controlling you. Second step, this is the one everybody skips. This is the reason we can't move past it, is you've got to determine what they owe you. 
I can't tell you how important this is. I can't tell you, this is why we get messed up. We recognize, here's who I'm mad at and I forgive them. Why doesn't it go away? You can't forgive a debt that you have not defined. You can't forgive something you don't completely recognize. One of the smartest things you can do is to spend the time, and this may be hard, is to say, I know I'm mad at my mom, I know I'm mad at my sister, I know I'm mad at my boss, and to ask yourself this question, what did they take from you? What do they owe you? And you need to work on it and think about it and define it until you can say, aha, I'm mad because he took an opportunity he promised. I'm mad because she took what you know, she promised or you, she took an opportunity, she took an experience I thought I deserved. You gotta define what's been taken from you because only then can you cancel the debt. Here, I made a list. Maybe somebody stole your childhood. Here's a tough one. This is emotional for me to think about. For some of you, because you're divorced and you had kids, your ex-wife or your ex-husband stole from you the opportunity to put your kids to bed every night. And that's a deep pain. And every time you walk by their empty bedroom, it just hurts. And every time you get into that empty apartment and they're with her and not with you, it just infuriates you. You see, forgiveness doesn't try to settle who's to blame for everything. Forgiveness doesn't try to settle, you know, have a big conversation and everybody figure out which side is theirs and which blame and guilt. Uh -uh, you don't ever get there. Forgiveness says, I'm gonna figure out, even if I was only 5% wrong, you know, I'm just gonna figure out what was taken from me. And I'm gonna cancel that debt. I'm gonna decide you don't owe me. And then the third one is you just gotta cancel the debt. You gotta make the decision, they don't owe you. I wanna give you an exercise for some of you, this will help. Somebody shared this with me, it was very helpful. For some of you, there are relationships that were so painful in the past that it's multitude of things. You, you can't do that sitting here. You can't do that on the car driving home. There were years of things, years of neglect, years of hurt. Maybe you're in a relationship now where it continues to go on. Do you know what you need to do? You need to start making a list. You need to make a list and it needs to be a concrete list where you begin to identify what specifically has been taken from me. What is the debt I am holding over their head? And you need to make a list to keep it on your dresser and every day or for a couple days or three days, you start thinking of stuff and you realize, aha, the reason I'm mad is because they took this, she robbed me of this. The reason I'm mad is he took this. I had the, you know, whatever it is. And you start making a list. You can't do this quick. You need to get it all on paper. And you need to spend enough time and let enough days go by to where the list is complete. And then you need to fold that piece of paper up and put it in an envelope. And you need to draw a big cross on it. And then you need to do something with it as a permanent reminder that in this moment, as of this day, I am canceling all of these debts. I am deciding that you don't owe me anymore. I know a lady that went in the backyard, buried it, put a cross over it like it was a cemetery. And she said from time to time, she would just see it out there and it was a reminder those debts are behind me. He doesn't owe me anymore. And you know what'll happen when you do that? You know I'm lying if I said, and you'll never think of it again. <laughs> oh, you'll think of it again. Those emotions will creep back in. Those memories will creep back in. You'll see her again. You'll see them again. And here's what you do. Just as your mind starts to go down the avenue of all those conversations and you feel what you used to feel, you say to yourself, no, nope, they don't owe me. They don't owe me. They don't owe me. And in that moment, if you would shift your thoughts and focus from that person to the heavenly father who forgave you, in that moment, it can become the trigger response to say, Father, I wanna say to you and take this opportunity as I'm reminded of what was owed me to say thank you for forgiving me of what I owed you.